Thunderdome Boxing Talk. I'm Anthony. Uh, this video here is about how much money does Floyd Mayweather really make and really have. Okay? Because I hear too many people talking about uh, Floyd's almost a billionaire and things like that. You know, Floyd's the best boxer because he makes the most money even though money, you know, is means nothing when it comes to being the best boxer. Uh, it's about, you can be the best boxer by beating the pe the boxers who people say are the best, okay? Which he doesn't do, first of all, but anyway, <clears throat> this is just going to be about how much money does he make and how much money does he have and really make. I'm not talking about the 32 million net, okay? Like, for the Maidana fight, that's what he made anyway. So we'll use that fight as the example, okay? We'll use the second Maidana fight as the example, you know? He made $32 million that fight. Let's just pretend it was, uh, it was 30, you know, j just for, uh, simplicity purposes, okay? He got 30 million, let's say. Uh, now, 33% of that, 33.3% of that goes to the manager, okay? And that's with all boxers across the board, okay? Uh, 10% 10 goes to the trainer, 10%, um, now I don't know if Roger and Senior both get a tra trainer pay or not. I don't know how they work that out. So let's just, like, I'll be real generous with Floyd on this too, and real conservative also, okay? So, um, we're just gonna say only one gets paid, you know, so 10% goes to senior, okay, we'll say senior, 10% goes to senior, 10% goes to the cut man, 10% goes to the chief second, uh, Al Heyman gets 10%, okay, that's Al Heyman's contract, he wants 10%, okay. Also, forgot about now, uh, Ariza, you know, strength and conditioning coaches get between 5 and 10%. Let's just pretend it's 5%, uh, because I think Ariza would basically um, take anything at this moment, considering uh, nobody in the game is going to work with him, like, damn near ever again, uh, considering, like, how he treats and talks about ex-employers. You know, nobody besides Floyd uh, seems dumb enough to uh, set themselves up for that kind of betrayal when there are so many other top-of-the-line uh, strength and conditioning coaches out there, you know. Um, okay, now, but let's get back to the financials, you know. $30 million is the net, not the gross, okay. 33% taken out <clears throat> leaves Floyd with $20 million, okay. If you add up the trainers, uh, the trainers cut, the cut man's cut, the chief seconds cut, uh, Ariza's cut, uh, Heyman's cut, uh, all their shares add up to thirteen million dollars. Okay, now take thirteen million out of Floyd's twenty that he has left, and that leaves Floyd with seven million dollars. Now, we know Floyd made $32 million for the fight, and uh, we did this with 30 So now let's put those $2 million back into play. And uh, now Floyd has $9 million before taxes, okay? Just in case uh, somehow <clears throat> there was a mistake, uh, uh, let's be generous and give Floyd say uh, six million dollars back so now let's say he got 15 million dollars before taxes now remember that's extremely generous and conservative okay but he got let's say 15 million okay after taxes he got somewhere between uh, eight and ten million okay let's go with nine we'll go right in the middle now remember he pays for everything uh, he pays for everything that everyone in his entourage needs, you know, their housing, their clothes, their fucking food, like, their everything, okay? Uh, and, you know, and, and, and he does that just so they will, uh, all stay his friends and, uh, keep helping build his ego up, you know? <clears throat> Remember, even his cut man... Uh, even said, Floyd has no real friends. He has to buy them. 
you know, that could be part of the reason why he got canned too. I mean, it's probably old age, but he did say this like a month before uh, he got canned, you know. But Floyd still said he's going to give him money, so, um, excuse me, that might not be the reason. But either way, you can Google that. He said it out of his own mouth. Floyd has no real friends. He has to buy them. Uh, and that's just the guys and his uh, crew, you know what I mean? Think of like, think of how much money all those top of the line Vegas escorts <clears throat> are milking him for each year. Uh, I guarantee you it's a, a mil a year easy, easy, you know. Uh, and and to, to support all these people, it's probably another couple of mil each year, easy, you know. But, so let's just say all that. To be conservative and generous again, so let's just say that all takes one million dollars out of each fight purse, okay? So that takes them down to eight eight million dollars, okay? Eight million dollars conservatively, you know, it's probably way lower than that, but we'll just be conservative here and generous and say eight million dollars. Now with his gambling habit, I'm sure he's losing tons. Remember. Gamblers always lose in the long run. They just only tell you about the times they win. They never admit to all the money they lost. You know, if a gambler has a bad night, they don't talk about it. You know, they might have 10 bad nights in a row, then, or they might even just one night, they might place 10 bets, lose nine of them, <clears throat> win one, and then brag to everybody that they just won a hundred grand or something but they will always leave out the fact that they just lost uh seven hundred thousand dollars on the other bets you know uh, if any of you gamble or no gamblers you know that's a fact okay all the pl all the private jet rides that he is definitely paying for um all the exotic cars he buys that lose a quarter of the value at least usually a third after eight months of ownership because the people that buy those kinds of vehicles they want the newest moss the, the the newest model possible uh so they can show it off to their contemporaries and flaunt their status they they don't want last year's model they don't want to pull up and be like yo look at my ride the last year's model and then their best friend pulls up in the brand new 2015-16 lamborghini rolls royce whatever Nah, they want the new ones. So when he ever, whenever he goes to sell those cars back, that's what they tell him. They go, dude, no one wants these no more. We can give you, uh, you know, a two thirds of what he paid for it if he, you know, if he's lucky. Uh, I would love to see like Floyd's real um bank account. I'd be willing to bet almost anything that he's never had twenty five million dollars. Uh, in his bank account. He ain't got that in there now. I'll guarantee you that. <clears throat> and again, $25 million, I'm being generous again. You know, if you read the letter that uh, 50 Cent uh, sent to Floyd while uh, Floyd was in jail and they were still friends, you know, um, it says it all in, in, in just one line at that. He says, uh, 50 says to Floyd, he says, uh, you don't need those people. You don't need to be given all those people all your money. You know, 50 knows Floyd just fights, then he spends till he's damn near broke, and then fights again. I mean, and so on and so on. 50 even said exactly that about Floyd on the Breakfast Club morning show. Uh, but 50, you know, and, um... Okay, but but fifty, one he see if Floyd would have like did that deal with fifty, uh, fifty wanted Floyd to fight Pacquiao after he got rid of Heyman and everybody else like the Watt with Sam Watson, L LRB, <clears throat> and all those who are sucking all his money away, you know. Fifty said, uh, the Floyd only needs um, his father for the trainer and a cut man. That's all he should be paying you know that's it that's it the rest can be done just with like a, and an attorney i guess to work out the deal or whatever you know
But if he already had the deal uh, with Showtime, the deal was there, you know. All Fifty had to do. He he's a uh, he got people in a promotional business. They can he can literally pay them like ten million to set up five ten events in a row. You know they would have did that with no problem. You know, <clears throat> but uh, but Floyd's too insecure for that. You know he he. He needs 100, 200 yes men around him. And once Al Heyman got word from Floyd, like what 50's plan was, he demanded that Floyd quit talking to 50. Because uh, th that is the reason that Floyd and 50 don't fuck with each other no more, if, in case you guys don't know that. Um, it is all because Floyd was, uh, or 50 was trying to uh, tell Floyd to fuck Al Heyman. You know, you don't need him and just I'll do this with you, you know. Uh, of course, 50 was trying to make money too, but he was literally, he, gave, he was given the blueprint to Floyd on how he can make so much more money if he would just, like, get these leeches the fuck out of his camp, you know? And like I said, once Heyman got word from 50, or, or from Floyd, what 50's plan was, he told Floyd, you better quit talking to 50, and, and we, like, we all know 50 obviously wasn't scared to fuck Heyman over, but Floyd was too big of a pussy to do that, you know? Heyman probably only had to say something like, uh, uh, remember that time uh, when you reneged on a management deal you had with Jay Prince from Rap-A-Lot and he sent some guys over to the top rank gym while you were uh, down there training and they beat the shit out of you? I mean, they, they beat him so bad there was literally puddles of blood, uh... And the rumor was they they put a gun in his mouth <clears throat> and had him crying. And uh, Bob Arum, this part ain't, ain't rumor, Bob Arum had to send over a, a half a million dollars over to the gym for Jay Prince. Otherwise, they were going to cripple Floyd so he could never fight again, you know. And uh, if you don't believe me, just go Google them keywords like... Hopkins, uh, Bernard Hopkins even tells, told the whole entire story, he, he, you know, he's a little bit gangster himself, he didn't care, he, he spilled the whole beans, he didn't use Jay Prince's name, but eh, everyone knows who did it, uh, Bob Arum actually, like, kinda chastised, uh, Jay Prince publicly afterwards, but didn't say exactly why, uh, he was talking shit on him the way he was, and then all the reporters put two and two together, I mean, there's many articles out there about it, and even Bernard Hopkins himself was, uh, there's an interview where Hopkins is making fun of Floyd for pretending to be a gangster, but, oh, you weren't so gangster when, uh, them gangs, them real gangsters came down to the top ranked gym and beat you so bad there was puddles of blood in the carpet, the people were scrubbing for weeks, and, uh, you were crying that day, uh, why don't you just be yourself, because you sure ain't a real gangster, I mean, just Google, like, them key words, like, Bernard Hopkins, Jay Prince, Floyd, uh, Blood, um, uh, you know, you'll just Google that, and you'll find the articles, and then you'll find the Bernard Hopkins interview, uh, that's, that's all fact, okay, uh, but Al, was probably like, you know, but I was probably like, if you fuck me over, that will look like a day, oh, uh, a day in the park, you know, what those guys did to you, and Floyd didn't want none of that, you know, none of that, like, even if he had 50 on his side, 50s people can't be there, you know, watching them constantly, you know, uh, Heyman has some money, and all, if you, if you're willing to, like, hurt someone, and you have money, like, they can get you hurt, that's all it takes, is to, like, yo, money's power, if you want someone hurt, you just need money, and you'll get the job done eventually, you know, because let's, like, let's face it, uh, if a real G, like a mob boss, or, like, a, a, a big cocaine trafficker from LA, I'm talking, like, a real gangster, you know, a real G, came into, like, the doghouse tomorrow, and, uh, they were going, and going after Floyd, Floyd's bodyguards wouldn't do shit, you know, they're more for, like, the little, like, crazy people on the street that are the weirdos that run up on Floyd and shit, they're not, they're not gonna fucking get in the way of some real gangsters, I mean, Uncle Roger was there when Jay Prince's people came through, and he talks big shit, and he just sat there and watched his nephew get his ass whooped, you know, so what makes you think some bodyguard's gonna do it, you know what I mean? They love their lives and the lives of their families <clears throat> way more than they fucking love Floyd. I mean, give me a break. 
Anyway, though, anyway, though, uh, Floyd tries to sell, like, a glamorous lifestyle, which, yes, at the moment, he is living, but it costs way too much to maintain it, and, uh, once he retires and sell, he'll probably sell, like, a lot of properties off and jewels and some vehicles off, you know, he'll probably end up having, like, I don't know, somewhere between, like, 30, 40, um, may, no, like 30, 40 million tops, uh, to live off of for the rest of his life, okay? But a leopard can't change its spots, and he will be filing bankruptcy, I promise you, within 10 years of his last bout. Mark my words on that. The guy can't, like, I hate to say it again, but the guy can't even read, okay? Once he stops fighting and all that money comes in, and all his high-powered attorneys are gone because he can't, he can't afford to pay them the type of money they want no more. All the snakes and con men are going to be coming after him. And they are going to bleed him dry. Okay. Not only does he have to worry about like that type of shit getting bled dry out of his own stupidity. And from like con men and women and... He's a woman beater, a compulsive woman beater. He's been doing it forever, okay? You don't, you, like, he can't, he's never going to stop beating women. He's going to retire, he's going to be all miserable all the time, and some woman's going to talk some shit on him, you know, going broke or being a pussy, that's why he ain't fighting no more, and he's going to fuck her up, okay? And he's going to beat a woman for something, whether it's for cheating on him or whatever. Like most of his other women, they they all cheated on him, and that's why he's beating them, okay? They're, uh, he's going to beat another one. And this time, he ain't going to have the money or the power in Vegas, because he ain't going to have no fight coming up to where Vegas is like, well, just give him this little time, please, because we need this money in Vegas. That ain't going to happen. They're going to throw the fucking book at him, and he's going to do a few years in prison, Okay? And first of all, he's going to go broke right there trying to fight and get his way out. Or if he goes to prison, the real gangsters are going to fucking bleed him dry, okay? And if none of you have been to prison, that's what we do. Or that's what that's what's done in prison, okay? You find someone weak, you, you know, you tell them, you better have some money put on my books, on my commissary. You better have, uh... Your book's filled and everything you buy comes to me. You put money on his books, his books, his books, or else you ain't walking out of here. Okay, that's just how it's done. Okay, Floyd will either have to take PC like he did last time. Okay, last time. You know what PC is if you've ever been inside. Okay, PC is protective custody. There is not... Segregation is a, a different... They will put some movie stars and shit in segregation, but PC is uh for protective custody okay it's it's the only snitches and child molesters go there okay that's where floyd was you know why because he can't handle himself without uh some giant bodyguards what's he gonna do when some dude who's 6'4 280 rock diesel comes up to him nothing feather fisted floyd ain't, ain't knocking no one out they're going to beat the dirt off of them, rape them, and then tell them, guess what? Run that money into my account. Give money to my girl on the street, my boys on the street. If that dude goes to jail, he's broke when he comes out. Promise you that, okay? And he'll be broke within 10 years if he can stay out of jail for 10 years. He'll still be broke. All right. He's like it's a guaranteed fucking T. He's either gonna file for bankruptcy or have to come out of retirement and take a few beatings, or both. Okay, uh, and you know, I I made this video basically for the Floyd fans who seem like they didn't even graduate like fifth grade and say Floyd's fucking. Uh, makes $50 million a fight. He's almost a billionaire. He's never gonna go broke. It's impossible. You know, well, I just showed you how it is very possible and very likely at that that he'll go broke, okay? So stop fooling yourselves, you know? This guy, you know, just because he gets a, a big paycheck of like 30 35 35 40 million that's gross and he has to pay people out of that in percentages you know that's a 
lot of money. He, the more you make, the more he's paying out. Just put it that way. Like, the manager alone is taking a third right off the top. Boom. And then everyone else is getting their 10%, okay? And then all of the people, like his publicists on huge salaries, LRB on huge salaries. Uh, I mean, there's tons of people in this camp on huge fucking salaries. You know, uh, anybody he trains with or that trains him, you know, he's, he's either paying, he has to at least pay one of them uh, a percentage. And I'm sure he's paying other. I mean, this dude is just paying people nonstop. All the women uh, buying them, you know, two thousand dollar purses, uh, four thousand dollar shoes, five thousand dollar dresses, you know, ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollar pieces of jewelry. I mean, that all adds up. Okay, all this dude does is spend money. Okay, he does like I don't know how he doesn't understand like the concept of saving money. Like, whether it, you, you think, like, oh, jewelry, you know, that's a good investment. That's a good investment. It goes up in value. Gold can go up in value. But try and sell it to someone who's, like, in the business. They, they give you pennies on the dollar for it, literally. Try to, you think a big diamond is worth something? No, because the beers has fucking millions of them just sitting in a fucking safe that they can flood the market with anytime they want. If you know anything about jewelry, there's so many diamonds out there, but they don't want to flood the market because they then everyone would be able to buy nice diamonds, okay? So they keep the uh, the supply and demand at, uh, at a rate to where they can keep the price high, okay? That's why... Just just for shits and giggles, uh, take like your wives or whatever, take some piece of the biggest diamond you can get your hands on and take it to wherever you think you take it to 10 different people that you think you can get the best deal from. Okay, and you know what they're really going to tell you? Like say if it was a, you paid $10,000 for the diamond, okay, you're going to be lucky if you can get $4,000 back for that diamond. You know why? Because they can buy the exact same diamond themselves for about four thousand dollars okay if you have like e even the gold they can go buy it cheaper okay like diamonds are so cheap to the uh to like the big companies like uh, like the beers or like k jewelers like their diamonds they, they they're paying a fucking uh, I mean, literally a one carat diamond of them is like 80 bucks, okay? But then go walk on their shelves and it's like $1,800. The markup is ridiculous and the resale, <clears throat> it's kapoop. That's why they say all them jewelry stores like King's and Jared's and, uh, you know, e even, even like Tiffany's and stuff, they have a, a policy where it says... You can return this diamond, right? If, like, say six months down the line, you wanted to, to, they say they'll buy it back from you, okay? At the price you paid for it, which, wow, that sounds great. Like, I can't lose any money, right? But no. They will, uh, what they'll do is they'll say it was a $500 piece of jewelry, okay? And you go into the store and, uh, Say you see another $500 piece of jewelry you want. So you go, I just want to do a 50-50 swap, right? No, they won't do that. They'll give you $500 store credit, but you have to buy an item that is $1,000, okay? Meaning, boom, they just made more money off of you. They'll never buy back that jewelry off you for $500 if you're not spending another $500 because they will lose tons of money they go out of business okay with all the people that would be like doing that return shit like that's why uh jewelry loses its value okay uh property is the probably the only thing that he if he owns property i've heard that he does but god knows if that's true uh if if he does that's his best investment all the cars the jewels the clothes any all nothing else matters it's all worthless in a while but the the um property you know it, considering like the uh, the economy right now it might not be the best time to sell now but you know as long as like a war or something don't break out uh hopefully you know 
20, 30 years from now, he'll be able to get a nice return on that. But I don't see Floyd waiting that long because he's going to go broke way before that and sell it off at, a, you know, maybe a bare minimum profit. You know, maybe 2% 2, 2 profit, 4% profit or something like that. He might even have to take an L on some of the profits uh, on some of the properties. Uh, who knows? I don't see him waiting no 20, 30 years, you know, to... uh to sell it for a profit, especially once he's going broke, he's just going to be like, I need money, Give, bring some money and however, sell whatever, and um, so like, for, for you guys who think he's like some sort of a, a billionaire or something, you know, if you know the fight game, you already knew he wasn't, and I didn't tell you anything new, but if you don't know like the business aspect of boxing, you know, I might have just gave you a little lesson, there's a lot more you can still learn if you can, you know, just do your own research and you'll find out. Um, but I had, a, I had this dude, he, like, literally going off on me uh, on, you know, internet, of course, you know, there's never a tough, I never run into a tough guy on the street, you know, they're always in the, on the internet, you know, <clears throat> in all my years, I've never had someone say some of the shit, uh, on the street that people say on the internet, they're always, you know, you know, keyboard killers, you know. Tell like a telephone tough guy. This is the new generation of them. So uh, I just kind of wanted to break it down to them to let them know like that this guy isn't making the kind of money you think he is. He's still making more money than uh, all, all the rest of the fighters, but the way he's spending, <clears throat> he doesn't have more money than a lot of fighters. There's fighters out there like. I will guarantee you Lennox Lewis has a fatter fatter bank account than um Floyd Mayweather. Uh uh I don't know what I don't know about Pacquiao, you know, he kinda he kinda got a s little bit of a spending habit too. Um But there's a lot of smart fighters out there who save their money, you know. Uh, Winky Wright was one that saved his money. Shane Mosley was one that saved his money. Uh, Oscar De La Hoya is definitely more wealthy, is wealthier than Floyd Mayweather. You know, he likes to talk shit on Floyd or uh, Oscar, but Oscar should just be like, dude, you want to fucking match uh, bank statements here, bud? Because I guarantee you, Oscar has way more money, you know, that's like accessible. You know, Floyd might be able to fight another fight and get, like I said, like about eight million, eight million dollars at the end of the day, just because like he netted thirty-two million. That ain't his money. You know, he he gets a little bit of that. Okay, and it's that's the way it is with every fighter. You know, some save their money a lot better. Okay. Uh, anyway, I just wanted to break that down for some of you guys. Uh, and again, Thunderdome Boxing Talk here. Subscribe uh, if you haven't already. And uh, I should be dropping two or three videos tomorrow, okay? So uh, watch out for them. Stay safe.